Do you feel stuck in life? It could be because of something that is very strenuous, something very notable occurred in your life. It could be a job loss. It could be the passing of someone. It could be a relationship that has turned sour. You need to listen to this podcast to help overcome whatever it is that's keeping you stuck in life to help you get beyond where you are. Hi there, and thank you for joining us on the Overcomers Overcoming podcast. We feature those who are in the process of overcoming or have overcome any type of life encounter, life obstacle that at the time seemed to be almost insurmountable. With this podcast, we have three objectives in mind. Our first objective is we want you to know with a confident resolve, you are not alone. We want to work with you. We want you to know there are others who are working with you, who want to help you through whatever you are encountering. And together, we will get through whatever you're experiencing. Our second objective is there are multiple options for any life encounter you are facing. We want to help you develop a resolve that there are various options and solutions to any life dilemma. Our third objective is to help you with critical thinking skills. If you're encountering something that was possibly a decision you made sometime in the past, And if you had the opportunity for a life redo, you would make a different decision. We want to help you with those critical thinking skills that can help you make an informed decision and not encounter what you're going through at the moment. We are the Cooper Culture, a veteran-owned business. We work with business personnel and families to develop and sustain connected relationship cultures within their families and organizations. That type of organization is one where people feel wanted, appreciated, and genuinely a part of that organization. I'm with my wife and business partner, Marty, who has helped me facilitate this podcast. Today, we feature Denise Dealward, who talks to us about grief. She explains that grief is very personal One person's grief is not going to be the same as, nor will the recovery period be the same for all people. She experienced the untimely death of her husband, and through that, she determined how to overcome grief, and she uses the FLOW, F-L-O-W, acronym method, feelings, let go, overcome, and whole, that is become whole, to work through grief and she has determined in her life how to work through her very untimely husband's passing. Marty, what are some takeaways we can learn from Denise? Denise explained to us about her eight-week course and there have been many people, women and men, that have taken it and it has helped them so much. So I recommend if you're going through grief, you look her up possibly take the eight-week course with her. It is an opportunity to get past what some people are experiencing of being stuck in the moment of the grief, but Denise can help everyone move on. Let's listen and learn together. Denise, it is great to have you with us. Our listeners are going to be very interested in learning how you have dealt with grief. You very suddenly lost your husband and through that process, you learn to deal with grief and you have what I'm learning is the flow grief method of releasing grief and you've learned how to deal with that. Some of our listeners do not know how to deal with grief. They're experiencing it and maybe they're just kind of holding it in, masking it and whatever. But Denise, our listeners are going to be very interested in learning about your life experience. It's great to have you with us, Denise. Oh, thank you so much for having me and um, giving me the opportunity to share how to move forward with grief. It's a very important topic and it's something that uh, not, as you said, not many people know what to do because there's a lot of information out there that just... And so, Denise, how did you deal with the very sudden loss of your husband? 
perhaps you went through some period of now I'm all alone and how do I deal with that? And if a person is in the process of a very recent loss of life or maybe facing terminal illness, something of that nature, how can a person deal with and maybe even prepare for an impending loss? Yeah, that's a big question. I, um, my husband was only 55 and I was 51 and he died of a blood clot. There was no goodbyes. He basically went to work and didn't, um, totally unexpected. So obviously I went into a complete meltdown. I didn't know, you know, I don't know which way was up. It's, it's a weird kind of a feeling because the body shuts down and we feel as though we're walking outside of your body. You feel as though the world's turning, but you're not, you've stopped your world, your world has stopped. Um, I started losing things. I started forgetting things. I started repeating myself. I didn't realize I was doing that. And my daughter said to me, mom, you're getting Alzheimer's. You have, you know, there's something not right. And I said, no, I'm not getting Alzheimer's. I mean, I'm only 51. How can I be getting Alzheimer's? She said, but you're repeating yourself. And I said, no, I don't think I'm repeating. And then I started noticing. And then I started noticing losing things. I lost my sunglasses and my keys for three months. I couldn't find them. Yeah. You know, and, and that's, I didn't realize that that was normal because at 51, I didn't have any widow friends or anybody that had lost a husband. So I had nobody that I could talk to. Um, plus, of course, my children had just lost their father. So I couldn't burden them with my grief either. I couldn't, you know, I had to put on this mask that I'm okay, that uh, everything's fine. My world is okay. You've got this. We've got this as a family. And it's really the worst thing that we can do. But we do do that because we go into shock. We go into shock. We go into, and we put a mask on and we pretend that we're okay. I'm okay. How are you feeling? I'm okay. I call it the land of the okay. And then everybody says, how strong are you doing? Oh my goodness, you're doing so well. You're so strong. Whereas in the meantime, you're actually crumbling. And what Denise said, um, so you, what, <laughs> through your daughter's help, took an introspective look, it sounds, and then through that, you developed the flow grief release method and mm. is the word flow an acronym yeah the word flow is an acronym so what what happened was i i went for i went for therapy and that therapy wasn't helping me my therapist said to me my, my psychologist said to me I've, about oh, so about six months after i've been going to her religiously every week i said to her when am i going to start feeling better and she said denise this is going to take five to seven years grief the loss of a husband takes time. You have to go through the five stages of grief. And I knew that Martin, my husband, wouldn't have wanted to see me in, in the state I was in. And I had to live his legacy. I wanted to live his legacy. And that's when my journey began. I started looking, what else can I do besides therapy? What else out is there out there that I can do? And I realized that through all my going deep within searching that we, ha we have to heal ourselves. That grief doesn't heal. Grief is love. We can't heal love. We can't let love go. We can't let the grief go. And that's when I started doing deep inner work on myself. I started rediscovering who I am. Who am I? I asked myself that question one night. You know, at 51, you don't even know who you are. Because in any, any relationship, any marriage, we lose ourselves who we are in that relationship. We become one person. Yeah. And it's in that becoming one person when you suddenly find yourself as me. Who is me? Who is me now without my husband? Who is me without? And that's the rediscovery. And that's where I realized that we don't feel our emotion. We don't give ourselves permission to feel. So flow is an acronym. Feel, let go, overcome, and become whole. The very first step is to feel. We have to feel our pain. We have to feel that emotion. And feeling is not just feeling sad, it's just feeling lonely. It's the emotion be beyond that, beneath that. What am I feeling? Where is it coming from? What is the frustration? Why am I feeling this way? Why am I feeling guilty? All these emotions that, that, that come up after we lose somebody. Because until we feel those and we acknowledge them, we can't let them go. That's the L in the flow myth. We can't let them go. We have to let them go. We're not letting go of the memory and the love and the life that we shared together, whether it be your husband or your child or your mother or your father, it doesn't matter who the person is. We have to let go of that, that deep, the 
pain, that grief, because grief is trauma. Let me ask you at this point, Denise, one, I have uh, heard one person say, my feelings are never wrong. And there's some of us personalities who would say, well, your feelings may not align with fact, but in the context of grief, as you're explaining this, I'm sensing that your feelings are correct. I do feel lonely. I do feel whatever. Is it a matter of just accept that, that there's nothing wrong? You are accepting your feelings and move on. I want to make sure that I'm not marginalizing anything you're saying, but yes, you are feeling something. It may be despair, but what, is it a matter of accepting that? And is, is that a part of it? It's it's more than just accepting it. It's actually acknowledging that I am feeling whatever you're feeling. You know, um, if, for example, you start, like in my case, I felt incredibly guilty because I wasn't with my husband. Now, guilt plays a big part in grief. I could have, I should have, I maybe should have, did I do enough? Where guilt comes in is, is, is we, it's not just accepting, oh, well, I'm feeling guilty and I'm going to move on because we never move on from grief. We move forward. We move forward in grief. It's not something that we can move on from. Because like I said, grief is love. We can't, and it's with us all the time. So the day we die, we will never heal from that grief. We heal, we heal ourselves. Now, let me ask you, uh, your grief is always with you, Ooh. but yet the L in flow is let go. That almost <laughs> seems like a dichotomy, let go, but yet your grief is always with you. So yeah. help us, Denise, how do I let go, but <laughs> yet this... know that my grief in the, in the remembrance of the legacy of my lost loved one is always there? Yeah, and it's a great question, absolutely. And this is where people get stuck in grief, where they get stuck and they go, well, I you, you say let go and I can't let go. And I've got to, letting go is letting go of the pain, letting go of the heartache so that you can look back with love and you can look back at the good times you had to. The grief is the loss of that love. Grief doesn't mean pain. We as a society have, have, have put grief and pain together. I'm processing what you're saying as let go by living the legacy, and that is the positive part. The grief, the happening is still there, but we're focusing on the positive, the legacy. Is that part of it? And I don't want to try to say something that you're not thinking. That's a, that's a small part of it, yes, yes. The biggest part is the inner work that we do on ourselves, our personal growth and personal development. And that comes in with the, the, the feeling part of it, is who am I now? What am I feeling? Am I feeling guilty? Where did that guilt come from? Because underneath that, you see, grief and the loss of a loved one puts a massive magnifying glass over our life. So whatever was happened and whatever happened in our life before that is now magnified. Does that make sense? Because it's like it brings it all up to the surface. All your emotions come up to the surface. But what we do is we mask them. We don't allow them to come up to the surface. We, we push them down. Now, I'm processing also what you're saying. If I'm not processing this correctly, certainly let me know. But the letting go part in, in the context of being able to move forward is your identity is not in your the grief the, or the identity is your identity is not in the one that is no longer with you, but rather the legacy is, but your identity is not. And you can move beyond that to move forward in life. And I'm wondering if I'm thinking of this correctly, Denise, and I, you've, you've gone through a life experience. I have not. Yeah, absolutely. So the identity part and the legacy are two different things. The legacy is the love, the the, the joy. Like Martin, my husband, it actually it actually is my wedding anniversary today. It would have been my forty eighth wedding anniversary today, and um, I celebrate that with love. Oh, today's the ninth. It was the nineteenth of June, and oh, I was married today. It was would have been my wedding anniversary. I don't celebrate that with pain because Martin was a happy person. He was a positive person. He was a jovial person. He was, you know, he he was the life life of a party so that's his legacy 
His legacy is passed down into his, his grandchildren and great-grandchildren now that he hasn't seen, that he hasn't met. But they know granddad. That's the legacy, right? Yes. Now, but I am not his wife anymore. That's my identity. I'm also not a widow. I'm Denise. <laughs> yes. That's the identity. So it's really important to know who you are after the loss of so that you can, so you, you're letting go of that. You're not letting go of your identity. You're letting go of the, the emotions. You're letting go of the pain. You're so Denise, I want to say it's okay to reach the point where you are you. Yes, you have to, yeah. You have to reach the point where you are you and love yourself unconditionally. Who am I now? What do I want for me? What we try and do, and it's whether it's the loss, you know, I've been doing this work for 15 years now. So whether it's the loss of a child or the loss of a, of a husband or a loss of a parent is our identity gets tied up with that person. It just does. We, you know, um, I've got a beautiful client who lost a, a daughter. She lost a daughter really suddenly, a teenage daughter. The daughter was away at school and um, she passed away at school through medical neglect. They didn't act quick enough. But here's the thing, when a parent, when a mother loses a child, or especially in the mother, the, as you know, the mother keeps the family together. The mother's the glue. If she falls apart, what happens to that family? The family port falls apart. So it's really important for the mother to do the inner work on herself. Who am I now? Okay, who am I? What do I want from me? Because she needs to fill up her cup first and then give from the overflow, not from her full cup, but from the overflow. Now, what is the O of your acronym, FLOW, F-L-O-W? Overcome. Some of us have a problem of overcoming that, wow, I'm stuck in my grief. I'm stuck in life. I need to move on, but I can't. And so That's how do I do that? So by this time, you've gone through the F and the L, right? You've, you've, you've felt, you've started letting go. Now, it's what is the overcoming is who am I? It's looking and looking at the deep, deep within me. What are my beliefs? What do I want for me? So it's taking that self-love and it's not selfish to self-love. It's, you know, we are taught in society that, oh my goodness, look how that person loves themselves. Oh, look how that. We need to love ourselves first. If we don't love ourselves, we don't know who we are. We cannot help or love anybody else because we can't give from, a, from an empty no, that's very good. So there is a matter of, I'm going to believe, Denise, we have to make a decision. We have to want to overcome. Oh, without a decision, nothing get, nothing changes. If we're going to, and this is why I get so frustrated with everybody says, oh, time heals all. You know, time is a great healer. Just wait for time. And this is where people get stuck. I work with so many people that have been waiting 10, 15 years for time to work. It's magic and time hasn't. All that's happened is they've got worse. Why have they got worse? Because they're doing nothing constructive. They're not doing the work. They're not, they haven't made that decision that I want to feel better. I want to, to fix this. I want to help me. And if we don't make that decision, nothing changes. I think it's very important what you just said that some people, and it's frequently, those with whom you're speaking who have not experienced what you've experienced might say time will heal this. And I think what you're saying, Denise, is time doesn't heal anything. The, the remembrance of, and you can recall anytime and maybe something, a picture, a conversation will activate your feelings. So you never, I use the word expunge what happened. It's always there. But you can get beyond the, I'll use the term raw feelings of I'm not worth anything anymore because of this devastating event that occurred in my life. Is that something correct? Absolutely. Spot on. Spot on. It's, it's, that's the letting go. Is we let, you're letting go of that, that pain, of that guilt, of that feeling. You see, anything that triggers us, like you, like you said, a photo, a sound, music, is an unhealed emotion. It's something we have to deal with. It's unhealed. So when something triggers us and we get, we, we want to cry, we want to get angry, what, what do I need to heal? Why am I feeling like And that these are questions that you start asking yourself when you know and you're aware of healing, healing yourself, becoming self-aware. I want to ask you, have you maybe had an emotion, a statement, something 
trigger the thought of your husband and at that moment you just were overcome with grief maybe even started crying i mean you did let go and you are overcoming but for this moment a thought something triggered something your emotion and for let me just pick a time frame for the next two minutes you are reliving the emotion uh as if the, your husband had just passed away D does that happen sometimes absolutely absolutely there's the love there's the love you can't you, you never forget that person for example i sold our family home it, it was really his home it was an eight acres he had built a motorbike track out the back for the grandkids because we had all boys it was his dream and i hung on to that for years because that was my emotional tie and it was only two years ago that I actually sold that and I built my forever home because eight acres for me was just too much to try and keep that, to keep his dream alive. But we do that and that's normal and natural. And when I, when I, when I drove away from the house, I just, I, I, I felt those emotions because I was, that was the last part of the letting go that we had to go to that house. And that was only two years, three, about two years ago. So yes, that's perfectly normal and to do that to have those emotions come up. What's not normal is to stay there and unpack there and live there. I'm envisioning a similar incident or let's say a happening might be cleaning out the closet of the person, the clothing of the person mm -hmm. you just lost. And your thought may be, oh my gosh, I don't wanna clean out the closet because this becomes so final. And yeah. I can envision that being something similar to selling the house. Gosh, the house is no longer here. We have been in the, this house forever. And now this becomes so final. But yet it is, I think, a part of overcoming, moving on, and getting beyond his or her legacy is still there. The, re the positive remembrance of... But we're moving on with life. And I don't want to marginalize anything, Denise, but uh, am I thinking yeah. correctly? The person that passed away, you're absolutely spot on. The person that passed away would not want to see you suffer. They loved you. They, they would not want to see you crying every day, getting up, moping around, not getting out of bed, not showering, not eating, pretending that you're okay, isolating yourself because they died, they passed away. They would want to see you happy because they love you. So their clothes, I touch on their clothes. I have so many clients say to me, how long before I have to get rid of their clothes? And my answer is when you're ready, when you're ready. There's no time frame. You see grief, there's no songbook or hymn book for grief. Grief is different for everybody and everybody processes it differently. But we as human beings, we want to know what's next. What do I do? Tell me what to do. And there is nothing to do. It's just to be, be in the moment, be in that, feel that pain. So what is the W in your flow acronym? That's whole. That's when you become whole. That's when you, you start reimagining your new life. So becoming a whole person. I'm going to ask you, Denise, how long do you believe it took you to be the whole person from the moment of your husband's passing to becoming a whole person how long did it take you and your response could be very different from anybody else you very eloquently said everybody grieves in their own way so the time from the feelings let go overcome to becoming a whole person what was the period of time for you at least a, a, approximately your best guess what a great question when I actually started the the work on myself it was really quick it was really quick because I I started letting go. I started uh, rediscovering who I am. I started I started finding my my passion again. You know, all my passions that I had as a child. What did I used to enjoy doing? I was doing that again. I didn't. I, I, I stopped feeling guilty. And what I do today, helping people in grief, was never on my radar. I was never going to help people in grief. I was a bookkeeper and a tax agent. That's what I did. I worked with small business. And here I am 15 years later, and I've helped thousands of people move through their grief quickly. Were you able to become the whole person you are now to work the FLOW acronym, help others with grief? 
on your own or did you have a, I'm going to call it a support group that worked with you? I had, I started off with um, becoming a life coach. That's where my journey began is I started, I signed up to become a life coach so that I could get the tools to heal myself. I was never going to do anything. If anything, I was going to be a business coach. And everybody kept saying to me, Denise, you need to work with people in grief. You've healed yourself. What have you done? You've done, you've done it so well. You need to help people in grief. Why are you working in business? And eventually I just went, okay, God, you want me to work with people in grief? <laughs> yeah, okay, hand it over to you. Here I am. Now, the whole part of it is that we never actually ever become completely whole. It doesn't matter who you are. The work never stops. We never stop the inner work and the growth. We never stop reimagining our life. I'm interpreting what you're saying as our life continues to evolve as we are, while well, we're continuously discovering our passion, our purpose. Our passion today may not be the same as it will be 10 years from now, may not be what it was 10 years before, but as we continuously look toward the future and let go, overcome, become whole, we live a dynamic life and what brought us purpose and passion now may be different 10 years from now. Am I hearing you correctly, Denise? 100%, 110%. I had a, a, one of my widow clients say to me a little while ago, we were having a conversation and um, she said to me, she said, you know, if my husband had to come back in my life now, I wouldn't want him. <laughs> <laughs> and I said to her, you know, Martin wouldn't want me because we wouldn't be, we're different people to what we were when they passed away. I had another client say to me, if I had known all this stuff when I met my husband, I would never have met him. I would never have married him. <laughs> Denise, I want to ask you, You, I think you just said that it's a daily thing. You, you work on it daily, even though 15 years later, you're still working on it. Yeah, absolutely. So you're not really, you, it, it's a, it, it, it becomes a way of life. It be, you know, it becomes how you think. It becomes how you feel. It becomes how you talk. So you, 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 you're growing and you're evolving every single day. It's transformation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If a person is dealing with grief and they feel they're not able to get over it, they want to work with you to determine how to execute the flow principle in their life. How can a person work with you, Denise? We are talking to you from the United States. You are in Australia. Can you work with a person virtually or how, how would a person work with you? Great question. I work mainly, funnily enough, with my clients in the United States. So I'm used to all the odd hours, <laughs> getting up at all funny hours, used to be in your, in your uh, future. We work online. I have an eight-week program that we go through, and I work very closely with, with, with my clients, very closely, one-on-one. -on -one. So as well, so you get the program and you get me as well, because Yes, you can just get, there's so many online programs there where you can just get the program and go on your merry way and do it on your, for true transformation, especially with grief, you need somebody there to pull you through what you're going, to help you, to see your blind spots that you don't see. Do you have a website our listeners could go to, to enlist your support? Absolutely. It's um, flowgriefacademy.com. And on my website, there's, um, oh, there's all the links. There's a link there that you can click to book a call with me as well. So I also offer a free call, a breakthrough call, where we spend, I spend about 45 minutes to an hour with you, just working out where you are in your grief journey, where you've been, where do you want to go, what's the most important, what, where do you want to go. And, of course, if the program's for you. So that's, because that's vital, because I, like you said earlier, if you don't want it, it doesn't come, it doesn't just come. We have to, we have to want to change. That's very well said, Denise. On behalf of our listeners, I want to thank you for overcoming your very devastating life event, but 
through this, you have a purpose. You want to help others overcome their grief. What I'm envisioning, Denise, is that in spite of the devastating loss you incurred, you're making the very best of this by rediscovering, discovering your life purpose, passion, helping others overcome grief. You've made a life transition and you are that whole person now. And to our listeners, I think you would tell them you too can come, uh, become a, a whole person, but there is a process and time to get from where you are to where you can be. Yeah. It's one, I always say you are only ever one decision away to a completely different one decision, not and a hundred, I think, one. And I through this process, you would w want to encourage that person, do make the decision to become the whole person, engage the process. It will take time, but it will happen. I think that's part of your message. Yeah, but it's, yeah, it's going to take time, but not years. It doesn't take years. When, when we say it takes time, it doesn't take years. It takes weeks. It takes, it's an eight, at the end of my eight week program, you're a different person. Great. Denise, thank you very much for how your life events have worked to a very positive end and how you're helping others overcome grief. Thank you so much for sharing your life. Thank you so much for having me on. I really appreciated it. We appreciate having the opportunity to share our and our guests' life's experiences with you. The Cooper Culture advances organizations to achieve and sustain high retention rates, connected communication, and trust through personality insights and principled leadership. You can contact us at our website, thecooperculture.com, and you can contact us directly at Ron at thecooperculture.com or Marty, M-A-R-T-Y at thecooperculture.com. We work with you to help assess aspects of your culture to advance the environment and people to their best performance. We do that through our staff of certified personal performance coaches, leadership trainers, keynote speakers, and disc personality behavior experts. You can book a speaking engagement directly through our website by contacting us at ron at thecooperculture.com. We look forward to sharing our life experiences with you, some of which are profound, some of which are pretty funny. Some of those life experiences are ones we'll never do that again because we've been through stuff. We truly look forward to working with you, speaking with you, helping advance you in any way that we can.